AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution is here and it's absolutely awesome. The wait was definitely worth it. guys welcome back to another video so i have tested amd's fsr on the laptop variants of the gtx 1050 ti and the gtx 1650 the gddr6 version now the 1050 ti is probably the most popular and the most value for money money a graphics card when it came back in 2016-17 it was people's choice for the best value for money 1080p graphics card and the GTX 650, everybody knows about it. It is the most popular and the most common graphics card that you find in laptops ranging from as low as 50,000 rupees to as high as 70,000 rupees. So it's the most common entry-level graphics card that you find in, you know, all entry-level gaming laptops. So both of these graphics cards have a huge audience and the performance uplift from AMD's FSR is very relevant to this audience. And I feel it's, uh, I feel you should definitely watch this video till the end because the results are amazing. Okay, so before coming to the you know image quality and the uh, benchmark numbers, uh, let me tell you what FSR is. Many of you may or may not know what FSR is. Nvidia's DLSS and AMD's FSR both are you know a sort of an upscaling technique, which which promises to provide you with better performance, better FPS in game, uh, and and at the same time there will be very less or you know minimal loss in image quality. Now. Both AMD's FSR and uh, DLSS, uh, although they promise to do the same thing, they do it in a very different way. On one hand, you have got a NVIDIA's DLSS, which is only available in RTX cards that is ranging from RTX 3050 as high as the RTX 3090. Whereas AMD's FSR is available for all graphics cards, for all vendors, even iGPUs like the Intel HD graphics and the uh, AMD's Vega graphics. So uh, AMD's FSR is completely open source. Anybody can use it. Anybody can implement it. The other big difference between DLSS and FSR is that NVIDIA is using deep learning to upscale the image, whereas uh, FSR is using some sort of, you know, special spatial algorithm, spatial upscaling algorithm to finally to upscale the final image. Uh, now, the details of this algorithm is I'm, I, I am not that much of an expert to understand that. But yeah. main difference is that uh, for dlss you need to have an rtx card which will have you know those tensor cores which are used for you know dedicated uh, you know deep learning algorithms uh, whereas fsr you know as you saw as you saw is just an it's just an algorithm it does not depend upon any kind of special proprietary hardware or proprietary code uh, yeah and the, as a result fsr is much more you know much easier to implement in all games and also it's much less time consuming to implement whereas for dlss you have to you know make a model for your game train it uh, so that it can efficiently upscale the image now there is a difference in quality between fsr and dlss we have to you know uh, mention that dlss is in its second phase it's a, it's in version 2 with dlss 2.0 and it is much better than dlss 1.0 but uh, amd's fsr is in, is in its first generation and even in its first generation it is actually quite close in terms of quality to dlss 2.0 and it is much much better than dlss 1.0 so uh, kudos to amd they have done a pretty good job One more thing is that uh, AMD's FSR is much more relevant to most people. That's because NVIDIA's DLSS can only be implemented on, with uh, you know uh, NVIDIA's RTX cards. Okay, now those people who have RTX cards, they already have a pretty good graphics card. I mean, uh, an RTX 2060 or an RTX 3050 can give you you know 1080p 60fps at ultra settings in most most games. So you know this DLSS doesn't make doesn't bring them too much of a value. However. For AMD's FSR, you can implement it in any graphics card, whether you have, a, you know, a dedicated GPU or not. If you have an integrated GPU, you can implement it in that also. So it brings us a much better, you know, value proposition for us, you know, low end or entry level gamers. So uh, that's why this video is very interesting. You must stay till the end because the results are amazing. So enough uh, talking. Let's get to the let's get to the performance numbers. But before that, uh, we have to like I gotta show you the image quality results because FSR has four different settings: uh, ultra quality, quality. You've got balance and performance. All you know in 
decreasing order of image quality so depending upon the image quality that you that you are willing to sacrifice in favor of the performance gain these are the four uh, you know presets that amd provides so you can set your you know image quality uh, based on your preference how much you're willing to you know compromise on the image quality but that said let's get to the image quality comparison all right now fsr is currently available in these games at launch however in this video i'll show fsr performance in godfall which is one of the games that has a higher graphics fidelity and is kind of difficult to run on these entry level gpus in terms of the hardware tested i'm testing the 2018 acer helios 300 with a 4 core 8 threads i5 8300h nvidia gtx 1050 ti 4gb ddr5 gpu and 16gb of ram in dual channel this is my personal laptop that I've been using since October 2018. And the other laptop tested is the HP Pavilion Gaming 15 with Ryzen 5 4600H APU with 6 cores and 12 threads. NVIDIA GTX 1650, 4GB GDDR6 GPU and 16GB of RAM in dual channel. By the way, I've covered this laptop in details on my channel so do check it out if you're looking to purchase it. And the last big thing is that we are testing FSR at 1080p resolution. We are not testing at 1440p or 4K resolution. It's important to keep this in mind when I show you the image quality comparison. I'll explain you the reason at the end of the video. First we'll see how FSR holds up in a static scene with some moving elements. So this is Godfall's opening level all epic settings at native 1080p resolution. Watch the image carefully as I'll cycle through all the FSR presets and let me know if you can spot the differences. Okay, so this is now FSR in ultra quality. This is quality. Now this is balanced. And at the end, this is performance. Now, I'm not sure if you could spot the differences on your phone or monitor through all this YouTube compression. I'm going to crop the image and show you the apparent differences. So even at 1080p, FSR does a commendable job to maintain image quality close to native resolution, at least in the ultra quality and quality presets. But look at these reflective surfaces in the distance where you'll notice the biggest differences. So this was native. Now this is FSR set to ultra quality. Not much difference, but there are some more shimmering artifacts and overall the image quality is slightly, ever so slightly worse than native. But the difference is not that apparent. Now this is quality. Not much worse than ultra quality is quite close. Now this is balanced where you can clearly see the image quality loss now. More blurry and more shimmering artifacts. And at last this is performance and yeah it's the absolute worst case scenario. Alright so that was primarily a static scene. But how is image quality affected once you start moving in game? Let's find out. So once you start moving, the differences are much easier to spot. At ultra quality, the image reconstruction is done very, very well, even at 1080p. It is definitely slightly worse than at native, but still this is very, very much acceptable. In quality, you can spot a little more shimmering artifacts, especially on the stairs. In balanced, it looks quite blurry and distracting. And yeah, finally in performance mode, don't even bother.
so that was all about the image quality since i'm playing on 1080p uh, i recommend you to play at ultra quality settings only because that's where you can get the best image quality results uh, because at you know quality or lower quality is still acceptable but you know using balance or performance is not good uh, instead i should rec i would recommend you to just you know lower the in game settings or use fidelity cas uh, yeah but uh, i won't recommend anything below quality setting any kind of upscaling algorithm whether it is dlss or it is fsr the higher the quality of image you feed into it the better is the image quality maintained when it's finally upscaled so we are only you know in uh, putting inputting a uh, 1080p image we are not put you know we are not targeting a resolution of you know 4k or 1440p those kind of high resolution you will get better results from fsr or dlss whatever but at 1080p i don't recommend you to go below you know quality settings so yeah now let's get to the performance numbers this is very interesting and my god, at 1080p with every setting set to epic, the GTX 1080 Ti is able to provide 21% higher average FPS with FSR set to ultra quality. The image quality loss is very little, but the performance boost is very impressive. Next up on the GTX 1650, once again at 1080p epic settings, we get a massive 28% boost to average FPS with FSR set to ultra quality. We go from 45 FPS to nearly 60 FPS and that's at epic settings. If you would just play at high settings with FSR set to ultra quality, we literally get locked 60 FPS on average. Just amazing. So yeah, what do you think about the results? I mean, this is basically completely free performance. It's like that meme, download more RAM. Here we are downloading, you know, higher end graphics card or something. I mean, this thing easily, you know, puts, makes a 1050 Ti equal to a GTX 1060 and a 1650, you know, it brings it closer to somewhat like a, a you know, RX 5500M. So uh, this is a massive, you know, value proposition that, uh, that AMD has brought and I hope most, you know, uh, game developers implement it because it's quite easy to implement also. Uh, it's what I've heard from the news is that uh, one of the, you know, from I heard uh, LTD say about it, Linus Tech Tips, they said that one of the game developers took only two hours to implement FSR in their game. So that's free performance in just two hours and um, also there is a mod currently available that implements fsr for gta 5 uh, uh, do watch out for it maybe if i have time i'll make a video on it so yeah uh, what do you think about fsr comment down below and if you're using a radeon graphics card you already have that feature in i think more games or not i'm not sure but uh, yeah let me know how fsr is performing for your radeon graphics because i feel it it works best on radeon hardware so yeah, that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. Like, share and subscribe. Keep supporting this channel. If you want to purchase any new laptops, links are down in the description. So consider buying from the links. It helps the channel out. So yeah guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.